Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Kathy. Happy Friday. Yeah, happy Friday to you too. Boy, we had a wonderful week this week, didn't we? Oh, it was awesome. Absolutely awesome. I tell you what, I think that uh, I think everybody should have a wonderful week every week. So yeah. it's yeah. it's all about your brain, right? It is. It is. Well, yeah. we, got a, we got a great show today because we're going to be talking about celebrating your dog's life. Beautiful. Uh, celebrating your dog's life is, I know it's hard to do, and there's a time when it's okay to celebrate because you do have that grieving in between. But once you get to that point where your dog has, has, has passed and you've come with the reconciliation of it and you kind of know, mm -hmm. that's wonderful. But there's some steps that need to be taken before you can know that you're going to celebrate your dog. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You've got, you have to go through all the, you've got to go through, you know, and I, and I don't, I don't speak to the stages of grief because I think it's more of a circular process versus linear. It's how I see it. Yeah. And so you, but, you, but you've still got all the things you've still got, you know, I can't believe he's gone. You've still got the, I'm really mad. He's gone. Then you've got the, I'm really sad. He's gone. And then you got the, I can't believe he's gone. And then you got the, I'm really sad. And then you got the really mad. And then it, it you know, it's just this big yeah. circular thing. Yeah. And this thing that says, I still have a whole ton of questions as to why it happened, as to what I missed, as to what I should have done different. And what I encourage people to do is bring all those questions up, bring all of them up and start answering them in your heart, in your heart, not your head. I want you to answer them in your heart in the way that gives you peace, period, end of story. It's not about an answer that works for your spouse or for your partner or for your child or for your friend. It's the answer that works for you. Yeah. And it's also being given permission to say, hey, you know what? This is what I tell people all the time. I did the best I could in the moment with the information I had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and, yeah. and let yourself feel that and let yourself be okay with that. I did the best I could at that moment with the information I had then. Because here's, and here's why I say that. And here's why I get really, really um, animated and, and, you know, kind of forceful with that. Because you're, you're always going to look back and go, and I wish I would have, I wish I would have done that differently, or I wish I would have seen that, or now I'm more mindful the next time I do see that. So let me give you a, for example, when Miko died, which has now been 17 years ago, when Miko died, there were some things I, I missed. And there were some things that I wished I would have pushed on my veterinarian a little bit harder. And guess what? I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't, do that over again because she was gone. So I didn't have that opportunity. But here's the promise I made to myself because of her. I said, listen, the next time I'm put in this situation where it's a serious health issue, I'm not going to back down. I am going to ask these questions. I am going to to push harder. I am going to do this. I am going to do that. I am going to do this. I am going to do that. And because of her, you talk about celebrating their life, Kathy. I also like to talk about what lessons did you learn so that the next time you're in that situation, you'll do it differently. And every time now that I'm in that situation, I, I say to myself, you know what? Because of Miko, I do it differently now. Yeah. And that's what that little girl taught me. And here, because of her, here's what I'm going to do now. Yeah. And so we, we, we learn from that and we move on and listen you got to channel the lessons that your your animals teach you they live in the now they don't live in the past they live in the now and so live in the now and be in the now and be okay with that yeah well you know on top of that there's the emotions and the feelings that enter into it where you think to yourself I'm never, ever, ever going to be able to get over this. 
my life will never and be you the won't. same. My nope. life, exactly. My life will never be the same. Nope. And I don't know how I'm going to function. I don't know how I'm going to be able to go to work, face my friends, because they don't get it. They and I hear, it. let's talk a couple things. You will never, ever, ever get this word out of your vocabulary when it comes to death. You will never get over it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two things. Here's two sentences that I start every session when I teach. We will never get over it and you will never have closure. Okay. So over it and closure, get them out of your, get them out. All right. We're not going to get over it. You're going to get through it. You're going to get through it. Mm -hmm. And you've got it. You've got to do your morning work. You've got to do your being mad. You got to cry. You got to journal. You got to light a candle. You got to do something because that's the active part of grieving. We've already talked about that is the morning work. You got to do the morning work. Going to work and saying my friends won't get it. You know what? You will have some friends that won't get it. You just have to know who you can tell your story to. Right. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't tell it to Bob who doesn't get it. Who says, oh, it's just a dog or it's, it's just, just a cat. A, it's just and, no, no. And unless you're okay to throat punching them, which probably won't go over well in the workplace, then I got one of these. You got one of the, that's exactly right. <laughs> you go, I used to carry this thing in my car. It was a doll and it had really long legs and it was called a damn it doll. And I would just. <laughs> The damn it doll, yeah. It was the damn it doll. And man, I would just, I'd put names on damn it doll. And some days it was Bob and some days it was Nancy or Bob. And I don't know. But you, you're going to have some folks that won't get it. Yeah. And so don't tell them your story, okay? Yeah. Don't tell them your story because you know they won't support you. Find somebody at work who is an animal lover and say, I got to tell you, my heart shattered. Mm -hmm. I lost my, my baby. I lost my precious baby. And and be with those people. Be with the ones that understand the bond. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Be with them until you're stronger that you can then talk to the people who don't get it because then you won't really care what they say. But you are going to, you are going to have people that don't get it. Those that never die, I love that. Hi, <laughs> Roman. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, but you're going to have people that don't get yeah. it. So get over yourself and as a grieving person and just know there are people, there are 30% of our population that won't get what your grief is because they don't get the human animal bond. You can't shame them. At the end of the day, here's what I always say. Listen, you don't get me because you don't understand loving a pet. I don't get you because you don't understand loving a pet. So yeah. wait, 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 boom. Yeah, We're going to agree to disagree. Bada bing, bada boom. Yeah. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> and more than likely, I don't need you in my world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> don't need you in my world. So that's, that's, that's the, right. That, that's the choice right. we all make. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if you are going to be in my world, then we're not, this is never going to come up for debate. You can never tell me, I can't believe you spent that on him. That's not a discussion we're going to have. We're going to shut that down. It's like religion and politics, right? For yeah. me, it's animal oh, ownership. Yeah, for sure. Leave yeah. it alone. Leave it alone. Yeah. Don't want to talk about it. Okay. So now we're going to be going through the transition. And based on your recommendation, we're going to show that wonderful video that you like going home. Okay. That's it. Now, if you're I, listening. Grab a Kleenex. Yeah. Now, grab finding it. peace when, when your dog dies. This is actually about all pets. And we're going to share this. This is one of Colleen's very, very favorites. One of my so, favorite videos. Okay. And read the book, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I have. Yeah. The book's awesome. Okay. Here we go, folks. Dear friend, it is my time to say goodbye. My legs are weakening. My sight failing. Smells are faint. My spirit is fading, and I have been called home and away from you. Although I have been called away, I leave you with the memories of our life together. I remember a cold winter's night when you sang to me in the dark as the wind howled and snow drifted outside the window. I felt your loneliness and knew my work. I never tired of watching you, of being with you while you lived your life. I supported your life, wherever it went, whatever you felt, whatever you did. I was your witness, your testament. I remember walking in the snow and running alongside you 
and chasing after balls, frisbees, sticks, and sitting by you when you read books or watched baseball games. I remember my heart jumping out of my chest when you came home and called my name, or grabbed the ball, or took me outside, or fed me. I hope you know that I loved all of those things. Whatever you chose to bring me and give me, whatever time you spent with me, I loved. And I thank you. By now you must know that there is always a goodbye hovering in the shadow of a dog. We are never here for long, for long enough. We were never meant to share all of your life, only to mark its passages. We come and we go. We come when we are needed. We leave when it is time. Death is necessary. It defines life. I will see you again. I will watch over you. I hope in your grief and loneliness that you will consider how sad it would have been had we not had this time together, not had the chance to give each other so much. I do not mourn or grieve, but I will miss standing beside you, bound together on our walk through life. Even as I know there is a long line of others waiting to take my place and stand with you. Thank you. It was nothing but a gift. And finally, I ask these things of you. Remember me. Celebrate me. Grieve for me. And then when you can, let me go freely and in peace. And when you are ready, do me the great favor bringing another animal into your life so you can give and receive this gift again. Isn't oh. that beautiful? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. There's two <laughs> things I pick out, and I hope everybody heard these two. Death is necessary, it defines life. And the second one that I use all the time is we're not here for your entire life, but to mark its passages. Ah, oh, aren't those powerful? Oh my God. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. powerful. Oh, jeez. I love them. Love them. The way he weaves those words together and Oh my gosh, so beautiful. So beautiful. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. You know what? I want to I want to pick out one thing in there, Kathy, cuz this goes it goes with our topic. So, there was there was a statement in that video. It says, "And and when you're ready, let me go." And of course, we never really let them go. Sometimes we sometimes we wake up on on a day or not sometimes. I hope this is where you're at. You wake up on a day and you say, you know what, I'm ready to feel differently today because it's been just this raw, guttural, crying, grief. It's been that. Today, today, I want to feel different. Today, I want it to be a little different because I'm, I'm starting to get my mind around it. I'm, I'm not okay with it. Don't ever, don't get me wrong with that. I'm not okay with it. But I'm coming to I'm, I'm coming to this place that says I want to get myself to peace with it. And I had this gentleman. I have to share this story with you because, as you can tell, I'm very I, I'm I'm very big on you've you've got to do things and you've got to you've got to you know actively mourn. You've got to do stuff. And so this particular gentleman and I and he allowed me to share this story. Uh, his name is Adam, and he had a service for his kitty cat Bingo, and it was in his apartment. And his mom and dad were there and his sister and bingo also had a, a sibling, a litter mate, uh, Custer. And so this is that was their their group that was at the funeral for bingo. And what I loved at the end of the service for bingo was that Adam said I was, you know, and it, it had been a bit after bingo died before they had before he had the service and his gesture to kind of put um, to, to to put bingo to, to peace is what he called it. I was ready to put bingo to peace. And so what he physically did to end the service is he picked up bingo's uh, food bowl, which had been setting out. He picked up bingo's food bowl. He did a little ceremonial washing of bingo's food bowl, and then he put it in the cabinet. Oh. And that was his, oh, his wow. physical way of oh. saying, I'm ready to let Bingo rest. Yeah. I'm ready to let him rest. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. beautiful. What's Roman saying to us? 
he's saying grieving is letting go of the cords that serve no purpose ideas that anchor the dark spirit in this reality i can't live without you i'm not safe without you etc these are attachments that come from fear is the dog's purpose to save us or is it to guide us through a process yeah you know i think so much of that too roman i love how you put that you know our animals represent so many things to us that it's the fear of the loss of those things and if you really kind of get down into to the the heart of it it's it's this unconditional we say it all the time but boy it's so powerful when you really think of all the elements and of all the things that it really touches with this unconditional love concept you know whether it's they saw us through this or they saw us through that or they they are the only ones that did this or whatever it may be they are they are that spirit that being that is the one that does that and so it's the fear of the loss of that um and i and i don't think animals it, it it's our what i believe is it's it's us projecting that onto them now i also believe and i loved what it was said in that video that you know they come they come to us at a certain time and they leave at the, when the time is right and i think that that is all orchestrated i, I believe you know through through this higher being as well that oh yeah oh yeah very very yeah yeah by the way roman by the way roman colleen is is uh spiritual also <laughs> you know uh, roman is our co-host on the dog connection show oh beautiful yeah, roman, so. <laughs> well, i'm so glad you're here thanks roman <laughs> thank you uh but anyway yeah I, you know there's just so many when you get to be um when you get to be <laughs> Uh, you know, mindful of, of what, you know, what all of the emotions and all the stuff like that, that you're going through when you get to be mindful of that. Um, it, it's, it's really powerful in how you process that and how you, how you make sense of it, you know, in your yeah. own way. Yeah. 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 I realized what he was saying. Somebody posted something that I had to delete. Yep, okay. So that. now the, the next area, now you, we do have two people that have reached out that wants to, that, that lost their pets this um, this past week. And one of mm -hmm. them, I want to show you this. Now, one of them is Paula. And this is her sweet Sammy. Oh, look at that face. That yeah, I know. Jaws. I know. And, yeah, uh, good. She took his I love that. Yep, exactly. No, no. You know what, Paula? Don't remove anything. Don't remove anything. Leave it all exactly where it's at. Leave it all right there and and just let it be and let me tell you something permission to fill the food bowl permission to fill the water bowl permission to do all that kind of stuff do everything that you need to do as you make your i always cut and in the words of my beautiful mentor you're you're still backing up and saying hello as you prepare to say goodbye leave it all there taking yeah. all that stuff and removing all that stuff you know what don't don't do that keep it there and and just let your heart ease into it and do whatever you need to do whatever you need to do and i saw both of you in those pictures so you're you're both going to do it differently you're both going to have different needs you're both going to want to maneuver yeah. this this at, at a different pace and it's okay respect that with each other and you know what here's the other deal make space for it make space for it Make yeah. space for how he's going to do it. Make space for how you're going to do it. Make space for it. But as in the beautiful words of Brene Brown, but come to the table and share it. Yes. Come yeah, exactly. Oh, I like Brene Brown too. Yeah. Love her. Love okay. Her. And here's another one, Kathy Bissell. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to read all of this, but to make a long story short, her dog, Bo, uh, crossed Rainbow Bridge and she had had him for a long time and she had just lost a dog a couple of weeks before that. So wow. that's two within in a month's period of time was very devastating for her. And here's her with her bow. Look at that big love. Oh my goodness, my heart yeah. goes out to you. Yeah. My heart goes out. And you he know, was a family of many. Oh my <laughs> Oh my can you imagine the hair in her house? Oh I love it. Yeah. That is precious. what a thing to notice. Yeah. Oh my God, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly what I see with yeah. mine every time. Yep, there we go, tumbleweeds. I love yeah. it. Well, I Kathy is it. Kathy is the type of person, she's a, a public figure and she's the type that uh, has a foundation for dogs and, and she's she's very, very much into helping them out. So she knew that it was coming, but like she says, you're never you're you're oh. never really prepared. You think you are, but you're just not. No, you're no. just not. 
and there's always that empty emptiness in your heart. Mm -hmm. And she says that only another dog can fill. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, you just make, it's funny how you make space. I got a beautiful, I'm going to, well, let's share this the next time that it talks about whenever I lose a dog, um, there's a, there is a hole in my heart. And then when the next one comes in, they feel that they don't fill it. They just make it bigger. And I only can hope as the, as the end of the story goes, I only hope that as the end of my life comes, that my heart is big and full because of all of them. Yeah. And it's such, a, I'll send it to you. It's such, I had it in all of my pet funeral homes. It's such a beautiful quote. Oh. So beautiful. Yeah. Oh. But you know what? I know we're going to talk about this, Kathy, and I'm going to I'm going to segue us so we can we can get right into it. So I want to because as you guys can all tell, I love to tell stories. Yep. We're going to talk about that. I want to talk <laughs> about that. So I had this family. I got to share this with you. It was a it was a, a lady. She had two kitty cats and they were they were siblings and they were 21 years old, 21 years old. And so the first kitty cat dies. And when she came to me, she was a hot mess. <laughs> she had had these kitty cats since they were babies, baby babies, and came to me and she was a hot, hot mess. And I walked her through. We had a beautiful full day vi uh, visitation. We told beautiful stories. We did beautiful things. And we just honored this kitty cat and, and everything that this kitty cat deserved. Okay. And actually got an urn that had the picture of both kitty cats on because they were both going to they were both going to rest in there together. And so I, tons of grief support, tons of opportunity for her to, to honor these these this precious love. And we we just made this made our way through this together. Well, lo and behold, about three to four weeks later, the second kitty cat dies. And I was really worried because I knew the second kitty cat was her heart kitty. OK. And so I thought, oh my goodness, what you know, what did what am I gonna have here on my hands? What am I gonna have on my hands? Because I knew this was her heart, kitty cat. Well, when she came to me, she was sad. Don't get me wrong, she was sad and she was she was mad and she was she was all the emotions, right? But she was also very much at peace. And so I asked her, I said, help me understand, because I know that this kitty cat is your heart kitty cat. And so help me understand why this seems just a little more peaceful as as sad but a little more peaceful versus the other kitty cat you know what she said to me and and i've remembered this my and this has been years ago and here's what she said to me she said clean because when i went through the first kitty cat with you you removed hear me hear me big kathy you removed the fear of the unknown for me and oh, so wow i knew what to expect when it did happen with this one I knew exactly what to expect. So I didn't have the anxiety and the anxiousness and the unanswered questions and the fear of what happens next and the fear of what if I don't ask the right questions and the fear of what if I should be doing something different. I didn't have any of that. She said, so therefore, hear me now, hear me, big Kathy. Therefore, I settled in and I just enjoyed every minute with that baby because I didn't fear what am I going to do when it gets here? Yeah. Isn't that a powerful story? That's great. Yeah. So, so that, that's why having a, a, a guide or to plan ahead is so important. You know what? The guide and here's what else. Okay. Everybody listening. I don't care what market you're in. I, I want you to start to figure out who's going to be on your end of life care team. Okay. So here's who's on my care team. I have my veterinarian who's in the clinic right over here. I have a home-based veterinarian who's on call at a moment's notice and she'll be here. I have my animal communicator. I have my pet nutritionist. I have my pet sitter. Those are all on my care team. And whoever I need of whichever service, then I pull them in, okay? And I didn't wait until it was a dire situation and it was now frantic for me to figure out who who's going to be here when I need them or what yeah. what's gonna, I didn't I didn't go through any of that. So whatever market you're in and you're listening to us right now, I want you to start to look around. And here's a good resource for you. And Kathy, I want you to put this website up again. Okay. It's the, it's our Pet Hospice Association. So it's the I A A H P 
www.ncc.org. And on that website is a member directory, IAA HPC, beautiful. It's the member directory and it's got an, an entire list of folks that are all home-based end of life services. And when I say end of life, I'm not talking about euthanasia, you guys. All right. I'm talking about how can we get these, these folks on our team so that when we need to start to do some comfort care, when we've got some old babies that we need to start doing some quality of life and do we need to elevate food bowls? Do we need to put some yoga mats down? Do we, yeah, we, need, right. to, we need to start doing the toe grips? What do we need to do? so that they have a beautiful quality, quality of life, okay? Might need to start doing some supplements. We might need to start doing this and that, but let's be prepared. Let's be prepared for it. Okay, okay? so that leads to your wonderful contribution to all of our viewers, which is your helpful guide to planning yes. ahead. Yes, here's all the questions. And do you have the second sheet on that, Kathy? There you go. Look at all that. This is all the stuff that you have to sit down that get, that I want you to sit down and say, like, for instance, final arrangements. It's right there. Am I going to do burial or cremation? And, and it doesn't matter what the answer is. It's whatever your answer is. If you're going to bury, okay, if you're going to bury, let's talk about that. Are, are you okay if you're not going to live in that house your entire life? Are you okay leaving them behind? All right. You also have to stop and think if, if this pet didn't like the outside, and the first time it rains, for instance, kitty cats who might not like water, are you okay with them being outside? Just think through it. That's all I want you to do is think through mm -hmm. it. And even when you create, we, we talked the last time a little bit about creating epitaphs or engravings on urns, for instance. I want you to think about things that that sum up their dash. You know, we talked about last time that that it's the dash is between the birth date or the gotcha date, you know, for our pets and the death date. The little dash, the little dash sums up their entire life. And so the question I always ask pet parents is, tell me about his dash. I want to know about his dad. <laughs> you know, is he a funny little guy? And and I think I've told you, you know, some of these folks that, that turn around to me and say, well, let me tell you something. What I know right now, he's chasing frisbees in heaven. He uh, he was my dock diving dog, so I know he's chasing. He's jumping in the dock in heaven or whatever. Yeah. And so sum up the dash. Put that in there. Go through all this stuff right here and and how you want to pay tribute to their life and what you want to do and how do you want to honor that. And, and take some time. Think about it before the day. I, I mentioned to you the last time we were together, my friend out in, in uh, New Mexico, and uh, she's a death doula. And she says, just because you talk about funerals won't make you dead. Just like talking <laughs> about sex won't make you pregnant. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Don't oh. you love that? <laughs> Yeah. Oh my God, that cracks me up. Oh, Every time gosh. I, it, I love me some Gail Rubin. Oh, <laughs> love it. Okay. Love so it. then the, the next thing would be that you have, which is another wonderful thing on your website, you've got um, uh, how to conduct a virtual uh, memorial ceremony for your dog. So it, we're actually going to share that today. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go here. Here we go again. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to do a full screen on this. And here we go, guys. This is Colleen, another contribution. Well, I guess I can say thanks. <laughs> I, uh, I even hate that we're having to talk about some of these Oops. things that we're talking about right now, given everything that's going on in our world with this pandemic and how we've got just such a, a new normal right now and everything that we're doing. So with that, I have had so many requests from people wanting to know how to do a virtual service for their beloved pet. And I wanted to take an opportunity to share some of my ideas with you and actually some ideas of things that I've been hearing from people on what they've been doing and how they've been honoring the life that they've shared with a, a beautiful, special love. So I hope with the things that I'm, I'm about to share with you, I hope that there's something in there that you can take away that can still make this experience with your with your precious love and, and the opportunity to, to have a beautiful goodbye. Um, that's what I want to do for you. And, and I, I purposely did this screen. I know it looks very business and, um, you know, with all the, the details and contact, but I put that out there because 
I want you to contact me if you do need some help or if there's some way that I can help you round out a service or some ideas or heck, even uh, even be your celebrant. Happy to do that. Uh, we're all in this together and I'm here to help you out and I'm here to do what you need to make your final goodbye and your final time as you celebrate the life and the love that you shared with, with a beautiful a beautiful little babe. I'm here to help out in any way. So we're in this together. Let's do this together. And I want to be here to help you in whatever way you may need me. So what I want to talk about is um, how to have a virtual ceremony. Uh, you may have some areas that are that are out there where you can still have uh, 10 people. And so maybe that's your friends and close neighbors that can be there. But for everybody else that you want to have uh, to be involved with, with honoring a love, then we're going to do that virtually. And I want to share some ideas on how to do that. And you know what? Quite frankly, I got to tell you, I, I do like to try to find our silver lining in everything that's going on right now. And I want you to think about this. You know, so often if we have a, a ceremony or a ritual or a service or whatever you want to call it, if we have that at a certain time on a certain day, it, it may be a situation where those that we want to be there to support us can't be there. So we've got this, this time right now where maybe you could have other people there that you need for support and other people there that knew your your pets that they too want to be involved in and now they can because it's in a virtual fashion or you've created a an opportunity where they can be present to 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 be with you to support you and to have their time to say their final goodbyes to your precious love so um as we get started i want you to think about the variety of things that are going to work for you and your in your world with your technology platforms that you're comfortable with and uh, and if you're not comfortable with any of those i can guarantee you there's probably somebody in your world or me i'm here to help out in any way i want you to reach out but there are a variety of platforms that would work beautifully to have a virtual ceremony you've got zoom facebook live a watch party google hangouts um, live streaming, you know, there's a, a variety of platforms out there for that as well. But, but these are from our, from the majority of our social aspects, these are really easy to use and really easy to have available to, um, you know, to either record a ceremony and to play out there at a certain time or to do them live. Who's going to be invited? Friends, family, don't forget about your groomer. Don't forget about your veterinarian. And I want to talk about your veterinarian and the entire clinic, including the vet techs and, and the receptionist. Everybody that knew you and knew your pet and, and possibly wants to be there, invite them. Other pet care professionals, so if you maybe have a Reiki professional or a, or a, a, a masseuse that, that you used for your pet, make sure you think about everybody that was in your pet's life and, uh, and you want to invite them along. How are you going to let them know? Maybe it's an invitation on Facebook. Maybe you email out an invitation, a variety of services out there that help create events and, and can email out for you on your behalf. Maybe it's a group text and maybe it's just the, uh, the beautiful old fashioned way of a, of a handwritten invitation. When you do let them know, is there gonna be an agenda that you're gonna set out, to send out with this? Maybe you ask them to do something for the service, and we'll talk about that here in a minute. Maybe uh, as a part of this, it's a, a request for donations to a local shelter or a rescue group on behalf of you and, and your pet. If, if they can't come, maybe what you ask them to do is to light a candle at a certain time of the day to be with you uh, in spirit, to be with you uh, as, as a show of support. What's your service going to look like? Is there going to be special readings, maybe special music, a, a, a playlist that you want to, to have available? Maybe you let people sh have the opportunity to share their own stories. How about finding a celebrant or somebody to conduct the service? Have those people send memories and thoughts to that person to add and to create the perfect eulogy and that can be read during the service as well what else can you do together think about this everybody can go out and do a bubble release and i'll give you a reading to do for that here in a minute 
maybe uh, maybe you take your your devices and you go out and you plant a flower together or or maybe that's something that you do um, to 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 have a ceremony out out amongst nature or, or not a ceremony a part of your ceremony or maybe that is your full ceremony that you do a planting after all I'm, I'm recording this today on Earth Day. What a beautiful thing to do to, to give back to nature. Our animals are so nature anyway. And, and maybe that's the beautiful thing that you do. Light a candle in their own home setting for you and, and to do all at the same time. Maybe you end your ceremony or during your ceremony by sharing in a glass of wine or a hot tea and, and an opportunity to do that virtual toast. Oh, I just love the feel of that. Just such a, a sign of everybody being together, all of these things, everybody being together at one time to do these. I told you I was going to give you some ideas of readings, and, and I don't want you to have to, to quickly jot this down or take a picture of this. I'll send it to you. Send me an email, and I'll send this to you so you have it as a part of your, as a part of your ceremony. And maybe the other thing you do is you print this somewhere and you make that available to those that are attending uh, from near and far to read this with you as, as you do your bubble release or um, whatever it is that you want to release into, into, into nature uh, on, on behalf of the life you shared. I took a moment too, and I thought back to all the services that I've been a part of. And while I didn't put every one of the readings and poems and songs and quotes, why I didn't put all of those out there, I did put some of them for you. So a living love, beautiful story that talks about the time we share with a pet from the day they come home. And we, rem we remember that that first day to the second day years later where we look down and now all of a sudden we see age where we once saw youth. And then we talk about that third day where that third day where we either make a decision or they make a decision for us. And it's just a beautiful reading that talks about the whole circle of life and the time that we share with a pet from the beginning to the end. Beautiful biblical verses. There's another beautiful poem that I like to read called In the Candles Glow. After everybody has lit a candle. And if you want that, be happy to share it. Lord's Prayer. Prayer of St. Francis, there's some beautiful readings. And if your service, if you don't want it to be religious, of course, there's so many really cool um, stories and poems out there. Um, I'm a Pinterest girl, and boy, if you can't find it on Pinterest, um, there's just some really great ideas out there. Songs, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. I love the Hawaiian version. And uh, there's the, the, the singer on that one, My Best Friend by Tim McGraw. Oh, goodness, it is so perfect to honor our best friends. And of course, the dance, one of my favorites, Wind Beneath My Wings, Rescue. I just had somebody share a tribute video with me. And uh, by the way, that's another great idea. Pull together 40 pictures. That's the, the number I like to use. Pull together 40 pictures and create a tribute video. I didn't even add that in here, but I want to tell you about it right now. It's such a really beautiful way to, to take all those pictures and to set them to one of these songs and to really create an amazing and touching tribute video. Let me know if you want more detail on that. I can certainly help you or share out ideas on, on tribute videos that I've put together. And of course, some beautiful favorite quotes that, that are out there. And I just pulled these. These are from some service folders that I put together. Yep, yeah, I do put together service folders for everybody that's attending the services that I do. And these are some of the beautiful uh, quotes that I've put on those folders that, again, make a nice addition to either a reading or maybe a, one of the slides in your memorial tribute video, or as a backdrop, if you're recording a service, maybe it's your backdrop. Beautiful, beautiful things to consider. Um, here's some of the others, and I just quickly pulled these and, and put them on the slides for you. But again, I don't want you to have to, to quickly jot all these down or take a picture. I'll send them to you. Just let me know what you want, and, it, and I'll get all the words for you. Um, again, we're all in this together. And I'm here to help you in whatever way you might like to set up your service. And, and if I can, can be a facilitator or a celebrant for your service, 
don't hesitate to reach out to me. You've got my contact information right there, and I'm happy to help you in creating your own service in the, in the comfort of your own home to honor the life and the love in, in this beautiful chapter that you shared with an amazing, amazing little love in your life. If you need me, I'm here for you. We're in this together, and I'm here to walk with you. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. Thank Just you. beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. I got to tell you, I had a, I was, as we were watching this, I had a vet friend reach out to me. She watched this particular um, piece that I did, and I sent her the words to that bubble release. And she took that, put it on the most beautiful card, had a bunch of them printed went to the the party store and got a bunch of little bubbles and that's now what she gives to her families is that little bubble release and a vial of bubbles and that that's from her to them oh isn't that just awesome yeah that sounds great yes. thanks oh, thanks jail over the right yeah love that yeah and yeah, yeah, those are super so cool. now here let, give me your uh, email address so i'm oh, uh, c-o-l-e-n uh -huh. two, two hearts pet loss center dot com. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if anybody wants any of those, I'm happy to email that out and, and get you what you need. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Oh, I'm so glad you played that. There's so many ideas and so many nuggets in there that are just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And I got to tell you what I used to love too, is when people would come into my pet funeral home and they would, they had actually created a playlist of all the songs that they believe their kitty cat or their dog or their bunny or whatever. I had a family in one day with a little uh, mouse, a little mouse, Snowflake. I'll never forget Snowflake. Spent, <laughs> spent, spent a full day in the room having a yeah. visitation for Snowflake and had a beautiful playlist of songs that were all about Snowflake. Yeah. So pull all that stuff together. Yeah. It's just so fabulous. I had a pet funeral for for my uh, my dog Mandy, not not Maggie, not the eighteen year old, but Mandy. She's the one that was killed in front of my eyes, and I was hysterical. <laughs> but my good friend Jim, who was a uh, um, major in the army, he uh, he became friends with me after my husband passed away. And when as soon as Maggie got killed, he came out with his son. This was when I was living in Arkansas. He he uh, came out with his son, and we took Mandy with us. He brought me out to his place, and he he's the one that said, "Why don't you just spend some time?" So I wow. he put he put her out on the patio with me, and we didn't bury her until the next day, which Love gave it. me time to be with her. And um, you know she got she kept getting stiffer and stiffer and stiffer. And I said that's okay, that's your spirit that's leaving now, but I know that you're still here, honey. And oh, it was so cathartic for me to be able to have that time rather than just going to the vet and and handing her over. But we actually buried her right on the property. And her, uh, his son Mike, he dug a, a hole for her, and then we had a ceremony. And Jim was a, a Eucharistic minister for the church, so he did the the reading for her. Then we put a big brick over it, and then a little statue of an angel on top oh, of the brick. Sweetness, yeah, absolute yeah. sweetness. I and I love what you said, Kathy. And I, you know, I can't stress that enough with people. I always tell them, slow down a little bit. When the day comes. It, it's awful and and let yourself ease into it you know whether it's having a, a day or two visitation at your house before you make the decision but slow down just slow down because just to move so quickly it's such an abrupt change and especially with animals who make us so routine and then that routine is cut off it's like oh my gosh it's awful just awful you know, I'm sitting here and I just had this aha moment thinking, what's the big hurry? Right. What's the big hurry? Right. Yeah. There is none. Exactly. <laughs> there is none. So it's, slow down. Slow yeah. down a little bit. I did, Gosh, and I know I told this story before. I had a veterinary friend of mine called me at four in the morning and her big great Dana just died. And she's like, what time can, can the guys be here? And I said, not until either tonight or tomorrow. And she's like, oh, my gosh. And she tells me to this day, thank you for telling me just to slow down. 
thank you for not having the guys come over and to, to take my, my precious baby away. Thank you for that. And she still went to work. She still went to work, but yeah, you know right. she loved, and she tells me this. She said, do you know what I loved was the fact that I knew when I got home by my Rayanna was still going to be there and I mm. could see her and I could spend a little bit more time with her. And when I was ready, then they came. Yeah. And she said, I just slowed myself down. I slowed my being down. I slowed my <laughs> spirit down and I just eased into yeah. it. Yeah. Eased yeah. into it. Oh, I can't stress that enough with everybody listening here. Please, yeah. whether it's for you or a, a, a friend or a family member or whatever who might be experiencing this, please tell them just slow down a little bit. Take the time. Take yeah. the time. I got to tell you a funny story. I was in, uh, I was in Chicago, your old stomping grounds. Yeah. I was in Chicago. and I My had hometown. Friend. Yes. I have a friend who has a beautiful pet cemetery. Oh, my gosh. I tell you what, if you want to see something beautiful for an afternoon, find a pet cemetery and walk through and read epitaphs. Your heart will be so full. Oh, it will be so full. So I'm out at his cemetery which I love to go out there anytime. I, I have a home in Chicago, Kathy. I haven't even told you that. So I have a home in Chicago. And so whenever I was at, at our house there, I would go out and I would go to see my friend Bill and, and I'd always walk the grounds because I just, I loved reading the epitaphs. And this particular day, there was a family out there and they were burying their doggy. And it was a mom and a dad and two teenage-ish aged sons. And so they had just lowered the doggy into the grave and they were having their final readings and ceremonial stuff. And, and I was standing back and listening and, and just, you know, being there for support. And I just got the biggest kick because they were, they had lowered the doggy and they were ready to end their ceremony. Right. And so the mom and the dad looked at the boys and said, anybody have any, you know, final words and out of the classic mouth of a teenage boy, he points down into the into the grave where the casket of the dog was at, and he points down there and he goes, "Stay." So I gave a final <laughs> command. Stay. Oh, oh my gosh! It's the light moment, everybody. Yeah. Of course, yeah. everybody. Laughed, and I got the biggest kick out of it. It was priceless. Yeah, just priceless. Okay, well, this is the end of our show this was uh season one episode three and next week i'm not really sure what we're going to be talking about but it will be fantastic what you know you what kathy i'm gonna set it up here's okay. what i want to talk about next week and i'm and i'm telling you this because i'm uh, i've just seen some pieces that are getting ready to go out on my website yeah with some downloadable pieces for children about pet oh. loss i want to talk two things i want to talk children and pet loss okay. and i also want to talk do pets grieve for their yeah. own friends. So let's talk children and pet loss and pets and pet loss. Okay. I want to talk about those two things. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Thanks everybody. Thanks everybody. Bye. Be safe.